Hello everyone, this is Abhinash and welcome to Model Universe. Before going into the principles of the X-ray productions, let me make a point to be clear that is, to produce X-rays, we need high velocity electrons. Okay? These high velocity electrons can be created by two processes. Number one is, by ionizing the partially filled air inside the tube, we can produce high velocity electrons. Okay, this type of process is called cold process and this type of process can be done in cold cathode ray tube. Okay, and the process number two is by heating the heavy metal under the high kilo voltage supply, we can produce high velocity electrons. Okay, this type of process is called hot process and this type of process can be done in hot cathode ray tube. Okay. So now in this lecture, what we are going to see is the principles of the X-ray productions in cold cathode ray tube. Now let's get started. And this is the model of the cold cathode ray tube. The original name for this tube is Crookes tube. Okay, hence this tube works under the cold process principle. We can also call it as cold cathode ray tube. Okay. From this tube, X-rays were first discovered by our Sir William Ponder Ranjan. Okay, first of all, we will see what are they inside the tube now. Okay, here I have a cathode and here I have anode and mainly it, this tube needs some amount of air to work. Okay, so some amount of air is filled inside the tube. That is partial vacuum. So the range of the air pressure is 0 0.1 to 0 0.006 Pascals. Okay. And that's it about this Crookes tube. And now let's see how X-rays are produced in this Crookes tube. Now, when I give a high kilo voltage current to the electrodes of this tube, small amount of electrons are accelerated in the cathode. Okay? Uh, as I said before, some amount of air is filled inside the tube, right? So what happens is these electrons goes and ionize the air and produce positively charged ions. Okay, now we'll go deeper inside the air molecules and see what happens to the atom of the air. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a single atom from the air molecules and I'm going to show here. Okay, so now what happens is when this electron goes and hits the electron of the air, it ions the electron and produce positively charged ions. Okay, so here again this ionized electrons goes and eat the another atom which is present inside the air and again it ionizes the electron from the atom and produce positively charged ions. Like this, these ionized electrons that is called avalanche electrons continuously doing this reaction in the chain process. This chain reaction is called as Townsend discharge. Hence this ionization mechanism was discovered by John Townsend. They called it as Townsend discharge. Okay. He is the one who described the fundamentals of the ionization in the air. Okay. Now due to this chain reaction, we have created enormous amount of positively charged ions. Right. So as we all know that always charges attracts towards their opposite charge. Right. Like this, again, this positively charged ions attracted towards the cathode. This cathode attracts the positively charged ions and repels enormous amount of electrons with the high velocity and this is what the principle going on inside the cold cathode ray tube to produce high velocity electrons okay now we will see how x-rays are produced when this high velocity electrons goes and hits the anode now now when this high velocity electrons goes and hit the anode x-rays are produced okay this process is happens inside the atom of the anode so let me take a single atom from the anode and let me show here. Okay. Now let me explain it clearly now. Now when this kinetic energy of this electron were stopped by the electron which is present inside the atom of the anode, first law of conservation of energy happens there. The first law of conservation of energy states that the energy cannot be created or be destroyed. Only it can be transformed or it can be transferred okay this is the law each and every particles in the world can transform energy but it cannot be destroyed 
the energy cannot be destroyed ever okay this conservation of energy happens everywhere in the world we are using it in our day to day life we are creating electricity by using kinetic energy of the water that is the gravity potential of the water is converted into kinetic energy right the, when this kinetic energy falls on the turbine turbine get moved and electricity is created solar panels converting the light into electricity even we humans can transform energy do you know that now i am speaking that is sound energy how it is happened when this kinetic energy of this air was stopped by the vocal cord it this vocal cord moves back and forth and produces sound kinetic energy is converted into sound energy our heart is pumping under the electric impulse of sa node and av node and each and every signal traveling the brain it is electric impulse okay each and every movement we move energy is transforming but it is not destroyed to prove that let me do a small example now okay so okay now i'm going to slap my left hand by this right hand let's see what happens do you hear the sound is created and i can feel some amount of thermal energy in the hand, left hand what is the reason when this kinetic energy of this right hand was stopped by the left hand energy transformation happens there the kinetic energy is converted into heat and sound okay why i am taking time to explain this concept means this energy transformation is not happening only inside the tube to produce x rays it's happening all over the world all over the universe each and every second okay and this is what i'm trying to mean what is law of conservation of energy okay now let's come into the core concept now when this kinetic energy of this electron stopped by the electron which is present inside the atom of the anode due to the law of conservation of energy the electron which is present inside the atom was ionized and due to that enormous amount of heat is produced there that is 99% of heat is produced and 1% of x radiations are created okay this is what going on inside the tube of the anode to produce x rays and at last there are two disadvantages for this tube number one is this tube will works only when the air pressure is range in between this 0.1 to 0.006 pascals if it is exceeds or decrease does not works okay second disadvantage is after four or five exposures some amount of fog or something like smoke is created inside the tube due to the ionization of the electron from the air due to the smoke created inside the tube when you give a current supply also it does not works okay so what we have to do is we have to eject the smoke from out from the tube and we, again we have to refill the air between this range okay these are the two disadvantages of this tube and that's it about this principles of the x-ray productions in the cold cathode ray tube and i think this video is useful for you and if you have any doubts or feedbacks on this lectures feel free to put comments on my comment box i'll try to make it on my coming videos and if you want to get my upcoming lectures you can subscribe my channel and thank you Can you get a cup of coffee for me? Yep, thank you. Oh, it's very hard. And the next topic is hard cathode ray. Stay tuned.